Hey, what's going on you guys? Tyson De La Cruz here. Thank you so much for joining me. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about wholesaling real estate and how to make money wholesaling real estate with little or no money. The reason why I'm making this video is because I get a lot of questions about how I started in real estate and how I started wholesaling houses. And yes, there's a bunch of information out there on the World Wide Web about wholesaling houses. In this video, I'm going to explain exactly what wholesaling houses is and how to close your first wholesale wholesale real estate transaction. Investing in real estate has truly allowed me to live a life of my dreams. And hopefully, once you get started with real estate, it'll help you live yours too. If you're new to the real estate investing landscape, I'd like to briefly explain to you what wholesaling is. Wholesaling is basically getting a property under contract and selling that contract and your rights to somebody else. Someone who's actually gonna close on the transaction. Example, a seller will say, I'm willing to take $100,000 for my property. You say, okay, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, you got a deal. You place the property under contract for you to purchase for $100,000. Then you assign the rights to the contract to an actual end buyer. And this end buyer typically is willing to pay more than what you have it under contract for. Maybe someone you know that you marketed to, a friend or colleague or associate, is willing to pay $120,000 for this property. Once the property is sold, you make the spread from $100,000 to $120,000. There is a 20K spread there. That 20K spread is called the assignment fee. The end buyer will fund $120,000 to close the transaction. $100,000 goes to the seller because that's the agreement that you and the seller agreed upon. And then you are wired the $20,000 difference. The property is sold and off of the seller's back. My colleague and the person that bought it is happy because they have an investment property that they own. I'm happy because I earned some money in between. I have done hundreds of these transactions utilizing this exact method. That's what basically wholesaling is. I get it, you're probably like, man, it's too good to be true. Well, you're f***ing wrong. It's actually that simple. There's a few things that you're gonna need to get this process started. A residential purchase agreement and an assignment contract. If you would like a copy of my residential purchase agreement, assignment contract, and some other tools, I'll place a link for that in the description below. Later on in this video, I'm gonna show you the exact tools that I use and help you find a deal. Meantime, stay with me. I wanna go through this process so we can all understand it. First, you find a seller willing to sell their property at a discount. How big of a discount is simply gonna depend on your market and your area. A formula that you've probably seen a lot of and that's out there and about is the 70% rule. The 70% rule is 70% of ARV. ARV is after repaired value, after the property's all fixed up and done. So 70% of ARV minus repairs. So basically taking a property from this to this. These are examples of homes that I've personally flipped. So now you have the seller ready and willing to sell their property for $100,000. You have them sign what's called a residential purchase agreement. Basically getting them and you under contract. Stating that I, Tyson De La Cruz, are looking to acquire or purchase said seller's property. Just heads up here, I get a lot of questions about closing or purchasing properties under an LLC. You don't necessarily have to have an LLC to actually start doing this. Next, you take that contract and you bring it to an escrow or title company and you open escrow. You give the escrow company the residential purchase agreement and the agreed upon EMD. EMD is earnest money deposit. Whatever you agreed with the seller to basically open up the file. This amount can be whatever you and the seller agreed upon. Just make sure that you can cover that amount of money because you got to come out of pocket for the EMD. Now once escrow's open, you find a buyer. Once you have the buyer, you send the buyer your assignment contract. The assignment contract is going to state that you are going to make $20,000 assigning the rights of the residential purchase agreement to them. You have the existing property under contract for $100,000, $20,000 assignment fee, bringing the total purchase price to $120,000. 
thousand dollars. Then you send the assignment contract to the escrow company and they'll do all of their things that they need to do to procure clear title. The title company gets all the closing docs necessary to close the transaction. The seller gets their money, you get your twenty thousand dollars, and the buyer gets the house. Win, win, win. Closing on these type of properties are going to determine on just a few factors. Leads, sales skills, deal evaluation, and finding buyers. Now let's dive into leads. Leads, one of the most valuable skills that you can learn in this business and any other business. There are a lot of different ways to find deals. If you're just starting off, you probably don't have a big marketing budget, so you probably don't want to spend or can spend a lot of money on marketing. One of the low cost and effective tools and systems that I utilize is PropStream. If you're interested in a free trial with PropStream, you can go ahead and click it in the description below. When you find the data that you wish to market to, some low cost and effective ways to actually market to that data are door knocking and cold calling. These are all great marketing strategies if you're on a budget. If you want me to go in detail about how I specifically farm for data utilizing PropStream, leave that in the comment section below. I'll create another video based on that. The number two thing that you got to focus on is your sales skills. When you start generating leads, you got to ask yourself, how good am I at actually negotiating deals? I know a lot of mother that are paying a lot of money for marketing and they're saying that they can't get any deals. Well, bro, I think your sales process is broken. You simply suck at sales. Not everybody is a great salesman. I get it, not everybody is as charismatic, sexy, and a word judo master like myself. A few things that you could do if you simply suck at sales, one, Partner with somebody that's good at sales. They do that for you. Number two, practice. Get out of your comfort zone. Continue to learn, grow, and sharpen that sales skills. A book that I highly recommend about sales is called The Art of Closing a Sale by Brian Tracy. Having great sales skills is one of the most powerful attributes. This is why with a lot of my coaching students, we focus on sales, overcoming objections, and negotiating tactics. Another great book that I would highly recommend recommend to increase your active listening and word judo skills is a book called The Game by Neil Strauss. This is a pickup artist book, yet I'm telling you that the tips and tricks in here are absolutely amazing. It'll definitely help you with your conversational skills, your social skills, and closing abilities. Number three is deal evaluation. You simply gotta know how to comp. You gotta know how to see if it's a good deal or not. You have to understand ARV, after repair value. Don't rely on any external source for ARV. Learn how to find it yourself with the tools and resources that you have available to you. Also, you gotta understand repair costs. What things are gonna cost to make the house actually look good, like this. If you want me to make a video diving deeper into calculating ARV, also leave that in the comment section below. The fourth thing you gotta know how to do is you gotta find buyers. Relationships, develop relationships with your end buyers. Start going to REI meetups, join Facebook groups, and start being social with the people that you're gonna do business with. Slowly and steadily build relationships with your end buyers and start building up that list. And don't get so caught up on this process because at the end of the day, if you you have a good deal, a good deal is gonna sell. Finding good deals in this business is a lot harder than finding end buyers. So there you guys go. If you guys would like for me to go in depth in any of these things that I went through in this video, please leave that in the comment section below because I'll go in depth with each of these individually. If I made a real in-depth video about all of these topics, I think it would just be too convoluted and confusing, but I'd love to continue to make videos if you guys enjoy enjoy content like this. I plan to cover everything that you need to know so you can get started flipping and investing in real estate. If you guys enjoyed this video, go ahead and smash that like button. If you feel somebody's gonna resonate with this content, go ahead and share it with them. As always, go ahead and click that subscribe button. Make sure your notifications are turned on. As always, guys, be kind, rewind. Peace.